Hey, what's up everyone? Today's video, we're gonna take a look at a new streaming webcam from Logitech, and that's coming up next. All right, before I get too far in the video, please don't forget to like the video if you like this type of content. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon. That way you get notifications on future video content like this. Now let's get to it. All right, there's a new streaming webcam coming out to the market and it's the Streamcam Plus from Logitech. From what I can tell from looking at the box, they've absolutely geared this towards streaming with OBS, uh, the Logitech capture software, as well as XSplit. The kit comes with a miniature tripod. It's their standard tripod that used to come with the uh, 922 Logitech camera kits with the little extending legs. It's also got an adapter bracket so that you can make this camera either vertical or horizontal. Now the film rate for this is up to 60 frames per second and only up to 1080p. One of the things you can tell right off the bat is that it's got a little bit larger lens design than their standard cameras before it. And one of the unique features is that it uses a USB Type-C. Now if you don't have a USB-C port on your computer, you will need a USB-C to USB converter, that way you can make it work. Now the price tag for this camera is gonna be about $180. So it's gonna be up there with the Brio, which as you know, shoots 4K. Now we're gonna cut over here in a second so that we can see the video test on this camera in 1080p and I'm gonna be using OBS. All right, let's see what this thing can do. Um, testing the Logitech camera settings, as you can see, we're here in the, uh, the settings and I've messed with this thing a lot and I can't seem to get the light exactly right. Um, I currently have a overhead um, soft light that's very similar to the soft light that Elgato puts out. It's just a different brand um, that shines right down on my face. I've got two screens that are also putting light uh, directly on my face. I've got a hue light off to my right hand side uh, that gives a little bit of the pink color. And I've even tried turning that to white and all it does is just blow out you know my face even more i currently have the camera set on auto and i mainly did that because one of the things on the box that it says is that it's got some type of new um software that can far more intelligently pick up your colors your contrast your focus all of that stuff in real time uh, that was geared towards streaming so of course i wanted to try it out now, one of the things I can absolutely say about this camera is as far as in low light situations, you don't get nearly as much as that hazy slowdown that you did in the C920 or the C922. And a lot of that I think has to do with the fact that it's got a little bit larger uh, image sensor or lens as I'm, I'm guessing that just from the look of the camera, I've gone down to pretty low light and even when it couldn't see me very well, I could still move back and forth without getting the ghost trail. So that's a big positive. Uh, that's something a lot of people have always had issues with in the past. Now, another thing with this is that the field of view isn't quite as large as some people would like. I think it's using the standard field of view that the C920 and 922 use. Uh, from what I can tell, it doesn't quite go as wide as what the Brio does. All right, now I'm gonna take the camera out of auto mode. That way I can mess with the colors a little bit and let's see what we get. So we're gonna go over here and take off auto. I'm gonna keep exposure at minus five right now. Um, for whatever reason, when you change a setting on this camera, it doesn't immediately take. Uh, so you do have to go mess with something else. Like here, I'll mess with the gain and you notice instantly the screen goes much darker. So I'm gonna adjust the gain up a little bit and that alone makes quite a big difference with the overall color it's like my face isn't as blown out as it was uh it still has some red tints to it and that could be because of my hue light so let me turn that to a color to match my light that's above me and now that camera light is white as well all right let's see what we can do from there I still see a little bit of red tint and I think that just might be the nature of this camera. The white balance is set for me pretty well. I can tell that just from my gray sweater and the, the logo on the front is showing up fairly accurate. Uh, the lighting behind me is showing up fairly accurate. What else do we have in here? Sharpness, I do like to take that up just a little bit because I think this camera is a bit too soft out of the box. Uh, messing with the sharpness a little bit does seem to help quite quite a lot. Uh, brightness and contrast, I don't really want to mess with those too much. 
um, just with my testing and playing with them. They didn't do um, a whole lot in terms of making the picture any better or worse. Saturation, let's, that's just going to dim your colors down or strengthen them up. So let's put that back on 128. Uh, the brightness, this is essentially what you get if you start messing with your brightness slider. We'll put that at 117, 126. Actually, we'll put it back right at 126. And then your contrast, as you see, moving it either way, left or right, immediately changes the picture. So at least with my settings, the 128 is the default setting. So that's what I'm going to put that back on to. And then you have your backlight comp, which doesn't seem to really do anything at all with that on or off. So let's go back with that off. Now, back over here on these settings, you can zoom in and out on the camera. Um, <clears throat> you can manually change your focus. The autofocus, for the most part, is pretty good on this camera. Every once in a while, you will see a jump in or out. And I notice that mostly if I'm looking away from the camera, you'll see that focus blip and it'll want to get something on the back. Um, I don't know how they've got the software made for this. I don't know if it's face tracking inside or what. So it could be the fact that I have a photograph on the wall behind me could be making the focus jump once in a while. All right, let's mess with the exposure. We can go down to minus six, go back up here, mess with the brightness. It's not going to help with so much. All right, let me change my lighting a little bit and cut my light up since we put it down on minus six. All right, so that doesn't look bad either. Um, actually, I think that's quite a bit better now that we're down on minus six on the exposure. And I cut my overhead light up a little bit to the point where it wouldn't bother me. Now, everyone's light settings are going to be different. Um, you want your lighting to be at a place where it's not going to bother your eyes while you're trying to play your game or whatever you're doing while you're streaming. That kind of defeats the purpose. So set your lighting the way you, you need it to. That's the most comfortable for you. Uh, mess with these settings based around that but with good lighting minus five minus six seems to be where you can go on the exposure and just kind of work around from that the camera does have its own built-in microphone from what i can tell the sound quality is pretty bad on it i wouldn't try using it unless you absolutely have to um, i'm currently just using a yeti nano mic and most of you streamers are going to probably have a dedicated mic to begin with so that's not really going to be an issue all right now my overall thoughts on this camera um, the quality, at least from what I can tell, is an improvement over the C922 and the C920. I don't currently have a working version of one of those cameras to do an immediate test to, but I'm sure that once this camera gets more available to everyone, you will see more tests like that. And you can also kind of test it compared to your own. If you own one of those cameras, you can tell looking at this video how it compares to what you have. Now, I think this is absolutely comparable to what my iPhone 11 did in one of my previous videos where I was using that as a webcam. I still think the iPhone has far better color representation in it. Even with not being able to control the settings in OBS like you can on this, I think the iPhone had a much better picture. Um, if you have the option to get a webcam, of course, the dedicated webcam is going to be great because I wasn't able to test uh, the iPhone method for longer than a couple of hours at a time. So I don't really know long term how it has an effect on the camera doing eight hour plus streams on a daily basis. Now, what I will say is I don't think it's worth the $170 price tag they're going to put it at 170 180 I think this camera would have been much better placed than maybe about $129. Uh, for the kit because it would have been a natural step up over the um, the C922 kit that's out. And they've kind of priced it way too close to the Brio for what it does in terms of video quality. And some of the things you lose with the, the wider field of view, um, the 4K recording that you can do, which doesn't really help you on the streaming side. So I also want to reiterate again that the only plug this has is USB Type-C. If your computer does not have USB Type-C, you will need to get a A to C converter. Uh, you can pick those up on Amazon from anywhere between $5 and $10 uh, because they do not include one in the box. 
Uh, Logitech, if you're listening, that would be awesome to include in the box because not all gaming PCs have USB type C's. Uh, there are a lot of people out there that are still working on older units that haven't yet converted to the USB type C like some of these newer computers. And it could just be an awesome thing that you guys could include in the box. Now, one of the things I absolutely can't wait for is uh, Harris Heller over at Alpha Gaming uh, getting a hold of this camera. He does really good camera reviews. Um, I think his studio setup is heavily geared towards the webcam streaming, so it gives a better indicator of what this camera is going to do under a real life scenario. All right, and I think that wraps up this part of the video. This is about as good of a picture as I'm going to get using the built in OBS software. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope it was helpful. If anyone has any comments about this camera, please feel free to uh, post down in the comment section. Until next time. Thank <laughs> you.